Disco Elysium, the final cut, is more than just a game. It's a work of art. It feels like the amalgamation of several lived experiences, but also acts as a fitting response to several contemporary classics in the film industry. Had Blade Runner been set upon a fictitious island in an archipelago, we may have ended up with something closer to Disco Elysium. It's clear from the get-go that the narrators not only understood the concepts they were talking about, many of them had been experienced. And through its internal monologues, it does an incredible job to articulate the existential crisis that can be defined by most human existence. Masterpiece, in my opinion, is a term too flippantly used by many media outlets. I'm not sure it's one I've ever used in reference to a game, that is, until now. Why? Let's find out. The narrative begins when your character awakes. He rises amongst the destruction of his apartment, which as it turns out, is a rented room in the city of Revachol, a small town called Martinez. The locale bears the scars of its bloody history, and what remains is a struggling economy sagged beneath the weight of that ancestral revolution. People looking for a deal. People looking for a keepsake. People who are terminally bored. All you're aware of as you begin your adventure is that you are aware of nothing. The main protagonist has lost his memory and is unsure how or why he got here. It soon unfolds that he's a detective within the RCM, the Revachol Citizens Militia, but that here on the island of Martinez, they're a law unto themselves. A murder has been committed and it's up to you and your partner Kim, an officer from another district, to work in unison to solve the mystery. Looks like an old central furnace used to heat the building. It's connected to the chimney. What makes Disco Elysium's story so compelling isn't just that it tackles so many socio-political topics with a deft hand, it's the sheer abundance of choice it affords the player. There are several different endings to the game, and the journey you take can look very different from one playthrough to the next. This is expanded upon in the final cut with the addition of four large core character drives, different theories of social organization that you can then opt into. This might sound confusing, but take my character. I chose to become a communist, just to see what would happen, and throughout my adventure, several of my choices related to this. In fact, I became somewhat of a communist preacher, trying to convert other characters to join my cause, but it sometimes opened up different avenues, both in terms of dialogue, but also within the narrative branches. The beauty of Disco Elysium is that despite the complexity of its systems, it's so finely crafted from a narrative perspective, with everything tracked and logged for the player, that you never feel out of touch with the events taking place. And some of the best moments are those red herrings or dead ends that just lead you down an interesting path of discovery. From a gameplay standpoint, it feels like an evolution of the old isometric games I loved as a child. You won't find combat in the traditional sense, and you won't be surprised to learn that initially they conceived this as a board game. Much of your time will be spent talking to the local inhabitants of Martinez. You will have designed your own character, choosing the different attributes that make them up. There are 24 of these, and during that initial design, you can allocate core ones, meaning that throughout the game, you can level these further than others. They have a direct effect on the gameplay, as well as how you communicate with others in the world, as the higher your proficiency within one, the higher your percentage chance to succeed at a check related to that skill. Covers the furnace. Something breaks loose in you. A mighty bellow echoes throughout the chimney's depths. And they'll also change that internal monologue. Much of Harry's time is spent thinking, but if you have a high intelligence skill, then his thoughts will play out differently, such as extra information, which then may become pertinent to the case, or help with a conversation to impress someone or change someone's mind. The check system feels very much old school D&D. I'm not gonna pretend that there weren't times that I booted up a quick save and re-rolled those dice to get what I wanted, but that's not always the case. There were a few times where there's just no going back. Potentially you could load up an old save that was half an hour earlier to get the same outcome, but it seems to defeat the purpose of what the developers were trying to create here. Almost everything within this lavish world can be interacted with. On the Switch, you'll use the right stick to highlight certain items which are shown with a green border. Although Elysium isn't a combat-based game, it's a world where you can die. You'll have a health bar which is linked to a skill, but there's also a morale bar. And if either of those reach zero, well, it's game over. There are two ways of replenishing this. Firstly, you may have healing items, the quantity of which are denoted by a number shown in each area. But secondly, and perhaps more interestingly, some of your dialogue choices or actions that you undertake in the world can result in a positive health or morale boost. Just remember the opposite is also definitely true. 
Movement is controlled with the left analog stick, and it's perhaps one of the weakest elements of the game, primarily due to its isometric nature. Sometimes your path will be blocked, be it with scenery or other items, and there's a minor lack of precision when it comes to placement of character. The developers have included full touchscreen support though, so when planning handheld, you can simply tap where you want to go or select dialogue trees using your finger. And certainly for movement, it potentially works better than the default of using the controller. What's so impressive about this game is that there's so much below the surface. Rather than fetch questing from A to B to C to D, you could be stood in exactly the same spot, having a scintillating internal monologue with skill checks, decisions made by yourself, and some of the most outlandish and impressive dialogue I've ever come across. You hear your heart pumping fast and irregular. Your joints ache and you feel old, but still alive. Certain experiences just can't be articulated, and I feel like this is one of them. The final component for me to this excellent and immersive world is its time-based mechanics. Your investigation will quite literally take you days, and certain events will only be accessible at certain times, and the quest log handily tracks the days in which each activity took place and when it's required. There's a genuine catharsis felt when returning to your hotel, albeit with your boombox in hand and finally having discovered the tape cassette so that you can see karaoke and blow off some steam before returning to your dishevelled boudoir. As gamers, we so often are drawn to the small aspects of experiences that were never intended to be grandiose or memorable. It's those details which stick with us. At one point, I didn't have enough money to stay in the hotel, and by equipping a bag to my character, I went around the entire town collecting plastic bottles and then recycled these for some cash. It had no real bearing on the experience, but something about the game simply allowing me to do it resonated with me as a player. Disco Elysium, from a gameplay standpoint, is near perfection in my opinion, and a rare experience that makes you examine yourself and your motivations as you steer Harry through its intricate narrative webs. Gameplay scores 20 out of 20. That's right, funky baby. And you just stood there. The controls unfortunately are let down by some performance issues and the limitations of the isometric view, but they've mitigated this to some degree by including those touchscreen elements. Control score 16 out of 20. <laughs> Artist Alexander Rostov has expertly walked the tightrope between expressionism and realism. The world of Disco Elysium is a beautiful one, with the Isle of Martinez feeling like a post-war oil painting. There's more than a hint of steampunk when it comes to character design, but it's the title's careful use of light and dark, which most reminded me of Scott's Blade Runner. And there's one particular locale where, guided by the illumination from your torch, searching through abandoned tenements with wild-shaped shadows dancing all around you that you realize how much they had to push the unity engine and that's where we get onto performance and straight in at the deep end frame rates in certain areas aren't great at all you're looking around 15 or 16 frames per second in certain sections it feels like this may relate to the number of dynamic lights as out walking around martinez some segments are 30 fps and feels quite smooth however when returning to your hotel which has different lighting effects and a number of dynamic ones at that that frame rate just drops to 16 and you can still capture video whenever you want which means there's more headroom that can be unlocked i'm guessing a few patches will be needed before this reaches its peak while on the topic of performance Let's look at stability. There's no getting around it. It's not stable enough as it stands. I've experienced five crashes, usually when loading into a different area. And I know Alex from Switch Corner had some issues with his autosave being lost. Stability seemed to improve as the game went on, but it is still not a good look for any release. And it's strange because you can play for 10 hours and have absolutely no issues, only to hit a crash when you leave the building you've already done so five times over that last period of time. The audio score is composed by C Power, and if that instantly rings a bell with you, then you'll be correct in thinking they are actually the band British C Power, an alt rock band from the 2000s, and whose musicality forms the structure of Disco Elysium's soundscape. While the original release had some voice acting, this version saw more than a million words of dialogue painstakingly recorded, and this results in over 95% of Disco Elysium having a narration, and an incredible one at that. The man stands at the far end of the shipping container. It's hard to say anything more about him. 
The star of the show is undoubtedly your internal monologue. This was voiced by Lenville Brown over an eight month period. And that internal voice is split over several different characters who in turn he acts in a different way. And it's not hyperbolic to say that his delivery is masterful. My only gripe when it comes to the audio once again relates to performance. When moving through certain areas of the town, there are very clear audio stutters where the track will be skipping in the background. The Rembrandt inspired visuals are a delight to behold. However, the performance will hold back that score. Performance and visuals in their current state have to score 14 out of 20. Once those issues are patched, you're looking at more like 18 or 19 out of 20. A similar issue occurs with audio, which would easily score 20 out of 20, were it not for those stuttering problems, which thankfully aren't as prevalent as the performance ones. Audio scores 18 out of 20. The game retails at £35.99 for the final cut version or your regional equivalent. Not only is there an incredible amount of side content to undertake, there's also a great deal of replayability. Decisions that you make will affect the story outcome and it's a special game that in my opinion everyone should play. Should they however have to put up with poor performance and some sound issues? Well, no they shouldn't. Is it good enough as it stands? Just about. Playing in handheld using those touchscreen controls on the new OLED with a set of headphones on is ideal. Deal. While it can be completed in around 20 to 25 hours, completionists will happily spend over double that making their way through multiple times and working their way through any number of strange side tasks. In its present state, value scores 15 out of 20. Disco Elysium is a great example of why our scoring system on Switch Up is different to other channels. This game has received 20 out of 20 for gameplay, and I consider it a masterpiece in terms of design. However, its performance simply isn't up to scratch currently, and as such, it suffers heavily in the visuals and audio department. If we simply had one score system, I'm not sure how you would articulate that. Do you go 9 or 10 and potentially have some very upset purchases, or do you go much lower and make the game look worse than what it is? Well, I haven't got to worry about that. <laughs> it gets a Switch Up score of 83%, but is still now in my top five games of all time. And personally, had I purchased it, the issues just haven't been able to detract from what's an incredible experience. It really is a special game. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Sorry if it was a bit long-winded, but it's one that I wanted to do justice to, and I've never played anything quite like it. A thanks again to our patrons. You guys have really supported us recently. If you want to join them, there's links to that in the comment. Remember, we've got our www.switchup.gg shop, where if you're based in the EU, you can buy your cards on there so you can buy your Nintendo online you can get your eShop vouchers and that obviously is a nice way of supporting the channel if you want to we will be launching our US side um, store very shortly as well as hopefully PayPal support but there are a few little loopholes we have to get through with that said for all things switch all the time keep it switch up cheers guys see ya